Welcome back guys and thanks to everyone who has actually answered those community polls I've been doing. I have been trying to do more things that you guys are interested in so I've noticed that you guys are a lot more interested in the things that are related to Azure and to Microsoft 365. So I recently put out a poll and asked you guys what you want to see next and the majority was more of the Microsoft Azure things. The next question I asked was what type of Azure videos you would like to see and the most common answer was you want to see a live migration from VMware to Azure. So here you have it, this video we're going to migrate two VMs from a VMware platform which is on a hosted server. We're going to migrate them into my Azure subscription. I'm going to show you guys how you do that. Before we get going, if you're liking the videos, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It really motivates me to keep making more videos. And let me know what you guys want to hear about. Drop it in the comment section below, send me a message. However you want to reach out to me, I really want to make the videos that you guys want to watch and I'm happy to make them for you and give you guys that type of value. Back to the video, I have actually already created those two VMs, or it's actually three VMs, you'll see them shortly. I've created those three VMs, and we are now going to go through the process of setting up Azure to start migrating those VMs. Any questions you have, please drop them in the comment section below. I'm gonna try not to go too fast, but not to go too slow, because sometimes it can get a bit boring, and all the time periods where they we're just waiting on things, I'm going to try and just leave them out. Okay, so for the purpose of this, I have actually spun up a VMware environment, a very small VMware environment, and I have provisioned three virtual machines. Those virtual machines are vCenter, so VMware vCenter, a file server, and a domain controller. So we are going to migrate the domain controller and the file server into our Azure subscription. We're gonna get them running there, and we're going to see how that all looks. So let's start by opening our Microsoft Azure portal. And so I have a few resources in here that I've used for testing in the past. Let's uh, create, let's try this. Let's go Azure Migrate. So to do this, we're going to use Azure Migrate. There is a couple of different options that you can use, but today I'm going to use Azure Migrate going to create a project I'm going to put it into a new resource group I'm going to call it RGCC migration 01 project is going to be CC migration 01 we're going to move it to Australia now connectivity point is going to be a public endpoint all right so let's create the project Okay, so we've created our project. Now we need to get an appliance running in our environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to discover. We're gonna say discover using an appliance. We're going to say yes, we are using the VMware vSphere hypervisor. We're going to name our appliance. Let's call it uh, CCMGR01. We're going to generate the key and we're going to download the OVA, which is a 12 gigabyte OVA, so it might take some time to download. So you can also actually just download a zip file with a PowerShell script and it'll install the appliance on an existing physical or virtual machine. I've actually used that method plenty of times. So I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna try and use the OVA method. So keep in mind, sometimes with our customers that we have, they do have VMware environments, but they don't have access to the hypervisor. So they're in some other organization's IAS, infrastructure as a service, and they don't actually get access to the hypervisor because obviously the provider is using that hypervisor for multiple customers and they haven't set it up in a way where it can be shared and they don't want the customer to have access, which is very common and normal. In those situations, we treat the servers that we're migrating as physical servers. So rather than selecting VMware vSphere hypervisor here, we can do physical. And then what happens is you create the same type of machine. So you're still going to have a appliance or a, a server that has the Azure Migrate appliance installed on it. And then you, what you do is you install an agent on that server that you're going to migrate and that new appliance acts as a proxy so that actually downloads all the data to it and sends it to Microsoft Azure in however it, it does so. Then it creates a disk and it creates a VM out of that disk when you migrate it. 
This method, however, uses snapshots. It's a bit different. It's a lot easier in my opinion, but if you do have the situation where you don't have access to the hypervisor, then you can just click the physical type. The wording might actually confuse you a bit because it says physical, but it's not necessarily an issue. You're just treating the server, your virtual machine, as a physical machine. As far as the appliance knows, it's no different. It's just the method in copying data is different. Okay, so we've got an hour left to download this OVA. So let's pause there until the download is finished. Anyway, that took ages because internet in Australia sucks. But we're back. So we've got the OVA file now. Now I'm not gonna go through OVA, VMware type stuff. Let's create this OVA or this virtual machine. Okay. Let's call it AZ, CCAZMG01. Hope you guys like my naming convention. We're going to put it on the only host that I have. So just so you guys know, this is a nested VMware environment. So even the physical physical host is not actually a real physical host. So thin provision because I don't want it to take the whole capacity, the 80 gig. I don't have that much on this nested hypervisor. So I'm just going to do a thin provision because I'll probably not use the 80 gigabytes anyway. So it is now importing the OVF file. I'm probably going to be here for another half an hour watching this. So, okay, so deploying the agent didn't actually work or deploying the OVA didn't work. So I'm just going to go through the PowerShell method that I usually use. I think it's got to do with having the VMware environment the way I've set it up. So. I've downloaded the zip file with the PowerShell script that will install the agent, which is here. And I'm going to run this script. We are installing it on a VMware environment. We are Azure Public. We are an appliance to discover, assess, and migrate service. And we are going to use a public endpoint because we don't have an express route. You've chosen to set up an appliance to discover, assess, migrate service running in your VMware environment to an Azure migration project with default public cloud on blah, 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 on Azure public cloud. Yes, that's correct. All right, so I'm hoping that I've met all the prerequisites. I thought maybe I needed to add a bit of disk space, but it's not complaining just yet. So let's let it do its thing. Okay, so it is finally finished. Installed all these things, and then it asked me to install Edge, but I already had Chrome, so I skipped that. This web app that it installs, it doesn't actually run on IE 11, so you will need to have Edge or Chrome or something like that to get access to it. All right, so blah, blah, blah. Now it's going to check our connectivity to Azure. And I think it's going to ask me to put in a key that I had earlier, the one that we generated earlier from the Azure portal. This always takes a bit of time from memory. Okay, that is now all the prerequisites have been set. I did have to download this. Okay, so the appliance has all but finished configuring. So now we're going to connect it to Azure Migrate. And I copy this code. It's going to ask me to sign in. And to sign into my subscription where I will be migrating. Now that should be a successful sign in. You'll see here it's initiating the appliance registration. And once that's done, we will be registering our vCenter. All right, that has now connected to Azure. So we've made a connection from our appliance in Microsoft Azure. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add credentials for our vCenter. So I'm going to call it vCenter Admin. This is the friendly name. The username should be the SSO. So we won't validate it because it's just storing it. But now we're going to add a discovery source, which is going to be the vCenter IP. We're going to tell it to use the vCenter admin credentials that we just created. We're going to save it. Let's see if this works. Sometimes this part can be a bit tricky, but that looks good. Looks like it's worked. So if we had SQL Server instances or web apps in the VMware environment, then we would add it here, but we don't. It looks like the validation is successful. So we're in business. The vCenter is added. 
it is we need to just click this button here that we don't need to perform those actions and now we can do a discovery which is going to go connect to the vCenter which we were looking at earlier let's go back and look at that so now the Azure Migrate Appliance should be doing a discovery on the vCenter it should come back and give us a list of VMs that it found during the discovery saying here that it should take around 16 minutes to complete the discovery I'm just going to come out and say that this is usually a very slow process so let's try Let's see if we can see anything in the Azure portal now in that Azure Migrate project that we created earlier. So we have a project already that we've created, which is the one we're in here. We can see that we have one appliance now. I, I don't like this GUI. I don't like the portal because see just then when I didn't even have to select the project that I created. So it's a bit confusing if you accidentally or purposely have multiple projects going. Anyway, not a big deal, you will work around it. You can see here that it is in contact with the appliance, it's saying that there is a discovery in progress. And if you click on the number one under the appliance, you can see that there is a registered appliance and these are the services that are running, which is the VMware Discovery Agent, the VMware Assessment Agent, the SQL Discovery Assessment, even though we didn't click on that, and the web app, even though we didn't click on that, but that's fine, that's not a problem assessments we haven't actually done conducted any assessments just yet that's why we're seeing zero in here but the appliance is the main thing so everything is now registered and we have our first contact with the Azure appliance and the Azure portal okay so you can see now that the discovery has complete you can see here it says vCenter server discovery has been initiated go to the Azure portal to review the discovered inventory the migration readiness checks have been completed successfully. Okay, so if we go back to the portal now, we can now see that there is four machines. So if we click on those four machines, we can see that there it has detected the VMs, all the VMs that are running in vCenter. So we've got the file server, we've got the DC, we've got the vCenter itself, and we've got the migration or the Azure Migrate appliance that I built. So we are going to actually be replicating these two. CCFS01 and CCDC01. So I have done no setting up of my Azure subscription. That's because I just want to migrate it as if I was migrating to a brand new subscription and I hadn't thought about things like virtual networks and network connectivity and whatnot because for the sake of this video, I just want to show you how to do a migration. In an actual migration, you need to make sure that you have done the network component of your Azure configuration first otherwise when you move things into that network then you're going to have things that aren't going to be able to speak to each other you're going to have things that aren't sitting behind firewalls you're going to have all sorts of issues so I really recommend that if you were doing this you have a Azure subscription that is set up with the hub and spoke topology that I've spoken about in many different other videos you have a firewall in Azure and you have connectivity into Azure via a VPN or via an express route so what we're going to do is for the sake of this you, you can just actually go ahead and click replicate at this point and it'll start replicating but for the sake of completion let's do an assessment that's going to tell us the type of VM that we need to actually go to so it'll actually look at the VMs that are running in vCenter and it'll assess the type of uh, the family and the type of VM and the location of the VM that you need to be creating during the migration process so we're going to say that the assessment type is an Azure VM because that's what we're doing and the discovery source is the servers discovered from Azure migrate appliance assessment properties so it's going these are the things that it's going to tell us it's going to tell us the size the target location whether we should do a reserved instance or not whether we should tick Azure hybrid benefit or not if you guys don't know what that is basically it means that you are saying that you have an existing Windows license that you would like to use and that you do not want to pay for it via your Azure pagey costs so we're going to leave those all as default we're going to go next and I'm going to call the assessment CC assessment group name is going to be infrastructure 
I can just call it infrastructure, that's fine. Appliance name, that's right. So we're gonna choose to assess the file server and the, the domain controller. So I'm gonna go next, I'm gonna go create assessment. Now it's going to run that assessment, it usually takes a fair bit of time. For the purpose of this video, because I should actually show you that it actually copies the VM in its entirety. So let's go to the file server and let's create some shares on here. Now I'm just creating them on, let's just unmount that, let's eject that, sorry. Now let's just create some shares on C drive because I don't want to add another disk. So let's call this one data. Let's call this one home. Let's call this one um, HR. Okay. So let's create some text documents. Hey, oops, not that. So if anyone's used Windows 11, have you noticed how you can't just right click and go new tech, new folder and new text file anymore? They've moved that around. That really annoys me. Also, I've been using a MacBook lately and it doesn't have the new text document feature when you can just right click. I think that's a bit annoying, but that's a bit of a nice to have in Windows now. Now that I've been using a Mac, anyway, uh, so okay, so let's go HR. We're going to say do not open. We're going to call another drive mm, E at E. This can be my home drive. We'll say E, oops, uh, important. And we'll go in here and we'll say this is an important document. There we go. I'll move that into home as well. I'll move it into, into home. There we go. Okay. We've got one more. We'll just say <coughs> lots more data. How's that? Okay. There is lots of data here. Oops, can't even spell data. There is lots of data here. Safe. Okay. Close. So now we have some shares. Let's actually, you know what, let's make them shares. So, let's go, oops, right click that, sharing, share, let's just leave it as is. Okay, now we have shares. I'll just leave that at like that. All right. Now, on our domain controller, and yes, domain controllers are supported for migration. I, as you migrate, I wouldn't migrate them because it's probably no purpose, but you can. I've done it many times before and it is supported. You can actually use Azure Migrate to migrate domain controllers. Real question is, why? So ask yourself that before you start. Just make some new users. J blog, I don't know who's a J blog. Okay, J blog. I'll give him a really secure password. Okay, let's make another new user. Uh, let's call them Karen Joseph. How do I think of these names? K Joseph. Okay. There we go. Let's make a new organizational unit and we'll call it staff and we'll move those users that I just created into there. And I should actually create a, another one below here. I'll call that one HR. We'll move these guys into HR. Yes, I call this one. I'll make another organizational unit. I call IT admins, and I will create my own account in here because I'm still using the administrator account. I'll call this one. All right, 
this one. Let's make this guy. Let's make this guy God. Let's make this guy Enterprise Admin and Domain Admin. Just in case I break this Domain Controller somehow. Okay. Now, we have an environment. We are currently doing a discovery. So we have an environment. We are currently doing a discovery. And let's see what it has found. Assessments. Okay, so we've got our assessment running. Status is ready. I think that means it's complete. Uh, yep, okay, readiness, ready for Azure. There's two VMs that are ready for Azure. Okay, and those VMs are these two. Now, what we can see about these is that it's suggesting that we use the Azure Migrate tool. It's suggesting that we use a standard F2 SV2 type VM. Boot type is EFI and storage on premise 60 gig. So it's going to make 60 gig here as well. So if you were going to give this to a customer now, you would more than likely export the assessment into an Excel spreadsheet. And you will, and I suggest you do this, you definitely open that spreadsheet and you go through it with some experience. So this is a algorithm of some sort telling you what you need to do to move your customers VMs and the sizes that it is recommending. I suggest that you go in and have a look at yourself and apply some knowledge that you've gained from experience in Microsoft Azure to to either confirm or dispute what Azure is telling you. And the reason I say that is a lot of the time the sizes it may recommend are either too big but more than often they're actually too little. It's because Azure is trying to give you a smaller VM so that you can sort of move into Azure and then if you need to resize, you resize later. But sometimes when you're doing VMs that are production VMs and let's say you have an application or a SQL database that is using a lot of resources, I really highly suggest that you think thoroughly whether you need more CPU or memory than it is recommending. That's my two cents. Okay, so now what we can do is we click on the assessment we can see a bit more information so it's telling us it's got two cores it's got four gigabytes of memory a source disk network adapter so you can see all the information that it discovered from uh, the VMware assessment it's recommending an F2 SV2 the monthly cost estimate is $34 a month US I know that's a tiny little VM and I think it'll be quite slow but let's just run with it anyway because I paying for the subscription from my pocket and I don't want to be paying a lot of money for no reason. Okay, so let's go back here. So we're happy with that assessment, that's fine, that's good. Discovery and assessment. Now I think we can start replicating. So if we Okay, so now that we have done our discovery, what we're going to do is we are going to go down in this portal to overview, and then we're going to go where it says replicate, going to replicate, and we are going to choose VMware. We're going to choose our appliance. We're going to next, in our virtual machines. Yes, so yes, apply. So those Azure Migrate assessments that were completed, we want to apply those recommendations. We're going to select the group which I created earlier called infrastructure, select the assessment. Now it's going to come up with both the VMs that were in that group with their recommendations. We're going to select them now. We're going to go next. We're going to replicate them into Australia East. I'm going to tell them which group I'm pretty sure I have. Yes, here we go. Can go into this group. Virtual network, I believe we can just go into this one for now. Doesn't really matter. As I said before, make sure you guys are actually paying attention to VNets and subnets that you are moving them into. I'm not really because these aren't actual live VMs. Make sure you have set up your network prior to actually configuring and replicating your Azure assessments. I'm not going to set an availability zone. 
or availability set. I'm going to select no infrastructure redundancy required. Keep in mind, keep in mind if you do do that, you can't change it later. So make sure if you require availability sets and availability zones, and if you require redundancy of these particular VMs that you are migrating, make sure that you select it at this point. Okay, we're going to keep all of the default settings. Other than that, because not much really matters in this scenario, as this is just for testing purposes. Go next. And we are going to see, we can see here the source VM is two cores, four gigs of RAM, two cores, four gigs of RAM. It's going to go to an F2 V2. If you want to change it, you can change it at this point in here, but it doesn't really matter. You can change it again later, that's not a problem. We are going to use, I never use standard H. Hard I never, I never use standard hard disks. I am today to make it cheaper for myself. But if you're working for a customer, or a client, or an organization that you work at internally, really try and avoid standard hard disks. They are not production worthy, and you will very, very quickly run into issues, and you'll very, very quickly be upgrading. So always at least go standard SSD. Tags. I always talk about governance and compliance. Make sure that you are tagging things as they come into Azure. Otherwise, you're gonna be chasing your tail down the track. Okay, we're now going to replicate, and this will probably take ages. Actually, before we pause the video, so you can see here that after I created the replication job, it started replicating successfully. And you can see now, if you go to replicating machines, you can see that there is an initial sync being performed. Let's see if our vCenter shows anything as a job or event as well. Uh, yes, you can see that there is now a virtual machine snapshot that was created of both these VMs. So I suspect what's happening in the background now is that that snapshot is getting transferred or replicated to Microsoft Azure. And we will eventually see this uh, in a healthy state. So it's in an initial sync at the moment, but we aren't able to migrate just yet. So what will happen eventually is we'll be able to go to overview and we'll go to, uh, we'll have two healthy machines here and we will be able to go to replicating machines and then click and then we should be able to click this migrate button once it's actually ready to migrate. This should actually say ready to migrate from memory. So if we go to migrate, we don't have anything that we can migrate just yet, but we will. So when that goes to a ready to migrate state, we'll pick up the video. Alrighty, so picking up where we left off. So far we have installed the appliance, we have added the vCenter to the appliance, we have registered the appliance to Microsoft Azure to our migration project. Then we also ran an assessment and then we actually kicked off a replication. So now we should be in a position to actually start a failover. So failover, as you can see, these are my two VMs that we replicated. Migration phase says that a test migration is pending, which is good. If you look at jobs, everything looks successful, completed initial replication on both those VMs, which is great. That means that when we actually hit the migrate button, we are just going to be doing a delta. So syncing the changes that happened since the initial sync, which should be not much because we haven't really been doing anything on these VMs. Now, if we go to migrate, you see we'll be taken to the migration wizard and we'll be stepped through the migration. Usually you can do a test migration in this instance, I'm not going to do a test migration because I don't have a, a whole lot riding on this. There's no risk involved, but normally you would always run a test migration first and that would make sure that no changes are actually committed and that your existing servers are not actually shut down when you do the test migration. And you can also select to put it into maybe a test subnet or a test network where you can actually isolate it into a bubble or something like that. So we're just going to do the migrate. I'm going to pick both these VMs to migrate. I'm gonna say shut down machines before migration to minimize data loss. Yes, I'm going to do that. 
Note that you can only do that when we're talking about VMware or Hyper-V. If you're doing a physical node, you wouldn't be able to do that. So as I mentioned before earlier in the video, if you are doing a migration from another infrastructure as a service platform, you won't be able to shut that down. So you will need access to shut down that VM first, and I recommend that you make sure you have the ability to start it back up. So let's go migrate. You'll see that it's actually starting the migration of those two VMs now. And if we go to jobs, you'll see that a migrate job is in progress. If we go to vCenter, I'm going to say that there is probably a snapshot being taken again now. Or not yet. But we had to see an initial shutdown of the of the guest. So It'll probably shut it down. It might take another snapshot after it shuts it down, and that'll be the delta. So we should see now that those VMs are both shut down. So these, so this one and this one, both of them have been powered down now. This doesn't usually take too long. Surprisingly, this component doesn't usually take too long. Uh, the max I've seen it take is around, I don't know, an hour or so and that was for quite a large VM. I could be proven wrong, but in my experience, it usually doesn't take long at all. All right, so the migration looks like it has actually completed. It has completed with information, which might be a warning of some sort. Before we do that, I'll just quickly show you. There was some events that occurred. Sorry, in the tasks, we can actually see that as I suspected just before we paused, so we initiated the shutdown, we created two we created two virtual machine snapshots, and then they consolidated with the previous snapshot, and then obviously it sent a delta over to Azure. So if we go back to replicating machines, we can see that these two have now been migrated, and the status shows as migrated now and it shows us the target VM and the target resource group and everywhere it went. Now make sure that once you complete a migration for a customer, you press this button, stop replication. Otherwise, it'll continue to replicate from your on-prem environment and you also have to, and you'll also be charged the cost of that replication and you'll also be charged the cost of the storage of that replicated data. Now, if we're talking like a 20 gig machine, that's not much. But in real life, when we're doing machines that are one terabyte, two terabytes, three terabytes, you're going to find a nice little surprise in your bill. So now if we go to home, and if I go to virtual machines, I should find that we have both those two VMs in here now. So my domain controller and my file server. Now, I don't believe they're going to have public IPs, so let's quickly add a public IP. If you guys, you guys might be already familiar with how to add a public IP, but I can't actually remember. This is not something that I do too often, I'm usually removing public IPs. So I'm going to associate a public IP address, and I've got one there, but that's okay. I will just create a new one and we'll call it um, ccdc01 pip. Okay, and before the security police come, I am just doing this for per testing purposes, so I can show you guys that it is in fact the same VM with all the data we had on there before, and then I'll remove this and I'll actually just delete the whole machine anyway. So best practice is actually to use a Bastion host. I would really recommend that if you're trying to access VMs over the internet. In real life, in our customers and our um, customers' environments, we actually more than likely are using private IPs because we have an express route from on-prem to Azure, or we have a VPN or something like that, and we have a management host on-prem, or we might even have a management host in Azure. We can just directly connect using the, the, using the private IP, and we know that that's nice and secure. We don't have any public IPs there. But just for testing purposes, let's also add a public IP to the file server. So now you can see we have so you can see straight away it's done a 
mapping of CPU and memory, like for like, from VMware to Azure, but you can see that this is clearly a lot slower. That's just something you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to always apply your own thoughts and recommendations on the sizes. I, I, I know that that VM from the family size that it applied, which was, what was it? I think it was a, let's have a quick look, F2, SV2. I knew that was going to be slow, um, but I want to keep it nice and cheap. Okay, so let's us open Active Directory. And you can see we even are still open where we were before. So we've got Elias Atty, that's me. We've got HR. We can probably even, we can probably We can probably even reach our file shares. There we go, shares. And you can see all the shares that we presented from the file server. I haven't actually connected to the file server just yet, but let's try that again. So sometimes what happens is those, after the first boot, after the migration, it takes very, very long to get into like a running healthy state. So you can see it's not actually running properly. Okay. Now what we'll try and do, we'll try and re well, we'll try and stop it, we'll deallocate it. No, we don't want to reserve it. No, it's fine. Let's deallocate this file server VM and we'll try and get back into it. I think some services may not be running so now we've been able to log into the file server as well after that reboot, and that looks pretty good as well. That's good. Now we can see we have those shares that were here before. We have lots of all that all those text files that are created that were there before when it was running on VMware. They're also here now. This is important information, that's great. And as I showed you before, we can also access those files from here, from the domain controller, and everything looks like it is running as expected. So I hope that gives you a bit of insight on how we do a migration. Obviously, when we're talking about uh, customer environments and larger enterprises, there's lots of VMs, and we do it in a staged approach, and we do it in a more planned approach where we've set up the network in a previous project or we've done it in the same project but prior to actually beginning the migration we'll usually do a test migration and we usually actually get a few people to test at the same time so right now for example i would have the customer testing the applications on the vms that we actually moved so to sum it up what we did was we started an azure migrate project and then i installed an appliance on prem and i made a mistake of using the OVA and trying to import that into VMware and knowing that that probably wouldn't work on my nested hypervisor. So what we ended up doing was spinning up another Windows server and installing the appliance manually using the PowerShell script provided by Microsoft. Then we registered that appliance to the migrate project that we created in step one. Then we registered the VMware vCenter to the Azure migrate project. And then we done an assessment and that assessment told us what the VMs we wanted to migrate would be look what they would look like in Microsoft Azure. And then we took those recommendations and we applied them. Then we replicated those machines and then we migrated using the recommendations from the assessment. Any questions please drop them in the comment section below. Anything else that you want to see drop it in the comment section below. We'll see you next time.